Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Mike Duffy. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to build your own sort algorithm visualizer. So uh, this is going to be on a Windows system. If you're going to do this on some other operating system you may still get some value out of it but I'll be demonstrating a Windows version. So uh, what are we building? So uh, we're building a program to uh, visualize sort algorithms operations. You can find YouTube videos with various sorting algorithms demonstrated uh, such as uh, the screenshot shown here. So I'm going to be showing you how to build your own simple sort algorithm visualizer so that you can experiment with your own sorting algorithms or uh, implement some of the well-known ones. So what do we need in order to build this program? Not much. We need a copy of Visual Studio. That's it. So if you have Visual Studio, that's fine. Uh, the community version is free if you would like to download it and you don't already have it. Or you could uh, create a virtual machine on the Azure cloud uh, that has pre-installed Visual Studio. Any of these things is just fine. That's all you need. So how big is it? How much effort are we going to put into it? It's really pretty small. I think uh, it's just about 50 lines of code altogether. There's only uh, one panel that we're going to create on a Windows form with two buttons, uh, one to reset and one to run the algorithm. Uh, we need one C-sharp interface with one method implemented in a class. And like I said before, it's about 50 lines of code. So it shouldn't take you too long at all. I'll be putting the source code on my GitHub repository uh, when the program is a little further along. Uh, for now, uh, feel free to follow along with the coding example. And I uh, hope you have fun with the project. So let's get into Visual Studio and get started. OK, here we are in Visual Studio. Let's create a new project. I'm going to create this as a Windows Forms project. And click OK. OK, now we have our new form. What we're going to do is expand it out a little bit to get uh, some room to work with. Okay, the first couple of things I'm going to add to this form are not necessary for the project. You can skip these steps if you like. The first thing I'm going to do is place a menu strip on the form. I'll put in a couple of the standard Windows menus here. I'm not really going to add too much to them. Double click on the exit menu item. Uh, so that we can have an exit program command on the file menu. Now let's just check out that it worked. Alright, we'll give it a try. And sure enough, it exits the application. The next couple of things I'm going to do are add a couple of controls that we're going to use in future versions of this program. I'm going to put a label here to label a combo box. And that'll be a drop down that we can use to select different sorting algorithms. Now, uh, this demo is only going to have one algorithm so far, so there's no purpose for this combo box at the moment, but there will be in the future. Now, at this point, I'm going to move on to things that are necessary for the program, so if you skipped any of the previous steps, here's where you need to start working again. I'll put a button on, which will be the reset button to scramble the array. I'm going to call it button reset. Double click to get an event handler for that. And then the last thing is we're going to put a panel on the form here which will actually contain the graphics. Now 
Okay, uh, we'll put it in an appropriate distance from the edge here. And we're going to come into the properties for the panel and anchor it at all four sides so that it will respond by changing its own size when the containing window size is changed. And we should give it a different background color so that you can actually see that it's there. We'll use the app workspace color and otherwise it's invisible until something appears. Okay, on to the next thing, the reset button. When we click this, there will be a random list of integers created uh, based on the width of the panel. So in order to accomplish this in the uh, forms code here, we're going to put in a couple of things. Uh, first we need a couple of variables. We'll need an array of numbers to sort. And we will need a graphics object to display the current state on the screen. So down here in the reset button handler, we are going to create a graphics object on the panel on the form. And we're going to create a couple of variables to hold the current state of the array. So as you can see here, the number of entries and the maximum value of the array are going to be based on the height and width of the panel. Uh, so that changing the number of integers that you can sort and the maximum values of them can be controlled by just resizing the form. And we're going to create the array based on the number of entries that it has, which is in turn based on the width of the panel. We're going to initialize the background of the panel to the color black. And we're going to create a random number generator. Let me zoom this in a little more to make it easier to view. We're going to initialize each member of the array to a random number between 0 and the maximum value, which is to say the height of the panel. And then we're going to draw bars. Let me zoom that out so you can see the whole line of code. and each integer in the array will be represented by a one pixel wide rectangle. Now that we have this code in place, let's test it out. Okay, we have our form here, and when we click reset, we should see the panel fill up with the random numbers. And we do. Okay, let's put that away and continue coding. Let's come back over to the design of the form and put one more button on. And this will be the last button we need to create. And this will be the start sorting button. Call it button start. We'll fill it in with the text start double click to get an event handler for it. So now we need to implement an actual sort algorithm so we're going to do that now. Come over to the Solution Explorer, right click on your project and we will add a new item which in this case is going to be an interface. And we're going to call it I sort engine, the I being the standard prefix for an interface. I actually should have used an uppercase I to follow conventions. And within it, we only need to have one method, a do work method, that is going to take an integer array, a graphics object, and then the highest value that's allowed. Those are the ar arguments. We can see that the interface doesn't know what a graphics object is, so we can hover over it, type control dot, and include the system drawing namespace, which appears here. And now the compiler is happy. Okay, now that we've created an interface, we need to actually implement uh, a sort engine. So uh, we're going to create another class here. Right click, add new item. This time it's going to be a class 
not an interface. And we are going to implement the world famous popular bubble sort engine. And within that class, we are going to implement the sort engine interface. And you can see that the compiler is not happy here because the interface requires that we implement a do work method, which we haven't done yet. So we can actually right click on this and in the refactorings, implement the interface and the proper method signature is created for us automatically. So we'll take out this not implemented exception and we will fill in the method. Okay, up at the top we're going to need a few variables here. We need a boolean to tell us whether the array is sorted or not. We need a copy of the array, a graphics object, a maximum value, and then a couple of paintbrushes so that we can draw white and black rectangles into the graphics object. That's it. And in the body of the do work method, we are going to make some copies of the input arguments. I don't strictly have to uh, give local names to these. Uh, some types of variables come in as a copy and sometimes uh, it's a reference to the original. We won't get into those details, but I'm just giving them local names here to work with. Okay, so to implement bubble sort, we are going to, uh, first of all, continue to iterate through the array until it's sorted. So let's set up a loop to do that. So far, so good. And while in the loop, the last thing we're going to do is to check and see if we need to continue. So we're going to create this is sorted method here. So here we have a test to see whether the array is sorted or not and within there we're going to step through the array one time and find out if any element in the array is greater than the adjacent uh, next uh, item in the array and if so we return false because the array is not sorted yet. If we pass all the way through there and everything's fine we'll return true. So that's our is sorted test. We can put that away and continue working on the do work. Okay, in the loop here, we're going to step through the array from the beginning to the end and compare each element to the one after it. And that will look like this. If the array element at the current index is greater than the one adjacent to it, behind it in the list, then we are going to need to swap their values. Okay, now we will need a swap routine, so control dot generate the method, and we're going to actually swap the values. That's what these three lines of code do. And now we need to update the display on the screen to reflect what we've just done. These two lines are going to remove the old values from the display and show the black background behind it. And then these two lines are going to show the new values. Now you can see that I haven't done any optimizing here. Um, there are ways to optimize this algorithm. Uh, you can experiment with those on your own. For example, one of the optimizations could be to combine these two uh, rectangle drawing elements into a single one that is uh, two pixels wide instead of two that are one pixel wide. Uh, that will probably actually make a difference in this program uh, because the act of drawing graphics is so much slower than uh, manipulating some integers that uh, that would actually be a, a noticeable improvement. Uh, other things like, um, you know, in bubble sort, after you've uh, made a pass through it, you don't need to go all the way to the end of the array again because you know the last item is in place. So you could go to the next to the last item and then the one before that and the one before that. Um, in a program like this, this particular implementation, 
uh, that would um, probably not make any noticeable difference at all uh, because the uh, stepping through a few integers is so much faster than the graphics op uh, operations that you probably wouldn't even be able to measure a difference but you might you could throw some uh, stopwatch operations in and uh, and test things and you might be able to measure a difference and uh, you might not okay so that's it for the do work method uh, let's go back over to uh, form one and make sure it gets invoked when the start button is clicked and that looks like this so you can see the compiler is not happy here because uh, as it turns out I accidentally misspelled the uh, name of the class when I was creating it as you can see here I have this uh, H that does not belong there so in Visual Studio you can correct this by coming over to the Solution Explorer and rename the file at which point you'll get an opportunity to automatically rename the implementation uh, within the code and you can say yes and you can see that the mistake is corrected here as well so that should take care of the compiler problem and it does so now uh, an implementation of a class has been instantiated here uh, you could if you had uh, several different sorting engines created uh, you could use any of them uh, in place here and it would satisfy the requirements of the interface as, as shown here so uh, for a future version of this program I'm going to uh, implement some more sort engines and we'll worry about things like getting the drop-down filled with them uh, so that you can select them on the main form okay now that we've created uh, an instance of a sort engine we can invoke its do work method passing in the required parameters okay here will be the moment of truth let's start up our program and see if we've done it correctly if we click reset we should get a random array of numbers and we do let's check our form resizing as you can see one of the problems with the graphics object is that it does not uh, automatically re respond here to a resize event that's okay we can fix that in a future version click reset again and you can see that it responds to the new size and the new uh, size of the array uh, conforms to the size of the panel that contains it so that part works fine now what we should be able to do is click start and see the bubble sort algorithm in action let's give it a try and as you can see it's running just as we expect now what are we going to do uh, in future versions of this program uh, take a look here I want to show you a problem with this implementation if I click on the algorithm drop-down nothing happens right now that's because this form is busy uh, running this sort algorithm uh, everything's running on the same thread here so that the entire remainder of the application is locked up while this sort algorithm is running so that's a bit of a problem uh, what we should do is run the sort engine on a different thread uh, so that the uh, user interface can remain responsive while the work is going on in the background and being reflected on this thread that will be uh, an optimization for a future version of this I'll come back to that and, and do that at some point in the meantime feel free yourself to uh, tackle those problems uh, implement new sorting algorithms uh, fill in the drop down with them uh, so that you can select them at runtime I'll be tackling all these things with my own solutions in the future but you can feel free to do that now as coding exercises if you like or if you don't wish to do that you can uh, check out the uh, sequel videos to this one uh, where we've come back and, and corrected those sorts of problems and uh, enhance the program so feel free to leave any comments below or suggestions I would appreciate that and I'll see you in the next video thanks a lot